Hello, I am Cindy Angulo, the creator of the FX Boom Fitness System, and I was going to cover some hip drills using a wall. First, we're going to kick into a wall, and then we're going to bend over, and we're going to raise our hip up towards the ceiling, and then back down, where you're kind of pointing your hip bones towards the leg that is down. So as you raise up, it might be a little easier, but lowering down might be a little bit more challenging. You're going to do this for up to 10 times and just get really good at pushing your toe into the wall and firing up your glute. Once you do that, we're going to switch to the other leg. Make sure your foot is straight. Don't let your toes turn out. And you can raise your arms up unless if you have any shoulder pain. Obviously, don't do that. And just take note if your hip moves up and down easily and go for that stretch. Keeping your abs tight and just keeping your body nice and long. Make sure you do not use your back when you're raising those hips up and down or else it might cause some pain and discomfort. Now, if you want to get more of an athletic aspect of this, then why don't you try hopping from leg to leg? So you hop to one leg, get your stability, kick into the wall, and still do the whole hip motion, and then try and hop to the other leg. Make sure you establish your balance before you kick into the wall and you hip extend. And you can do this maybe 10 times on each leg or maybe 10 times hopping from leg to leg. This is a great sagittal plane exercise. Now we're going to work in the funnel plane. So first you're going to push that whole leg into the wall. The key is keeping your heel and your and the back outside of your toe into the wall. And you're going to reach with your arm. And now you can cross either behind or in front. You can use the floor and touch your toe down. But the whole idea of this is to get that big stretch. Now some people like maybe on when their right side's lifting into the wall, they like to cross over in the front with the right leg. But when their left leg is pushing into the wall, they might like to cross behind. So kind of pay attention. Do what feels good. There should never be any pain with this exercise. You may notice that your ankle or the foot that's supporting you might want to roll out. So really control making sure you've got a firm, flat grip with your tripod on the ground. Now, if you want to take this one up a notch, you can add a little hop hop where you do the touch touch and you hop from one foot to the other. Establish your balance before you get going again. And then again, repeat all this on the other side. Now make sure you get your body set so that you feel both glutes when you're pushing that leg into the wall. Make sure the leg that's into the wall is super straight and that you're pushing in fact with the heel and the pinky toe side, not just the pinky toe because that's turning the leg out and you might miss the glute. And make sure you keep your abs tight and glutes tight so that way you're not arching your back, cheating. Again, you can add a hop on this. But again, if it bothers your knees or anything like that, or you lose the foot control, then go back a step. And then obviously over time, graduate yourself back. And you can vary it between crossing behind or crossing front, whatever works best for you. If it's painful, don't do it. If it feels really good, you need to do a little bit more. Now we're gonna do the rotary one. Now you're gonna step out from the wall, one step and you're going to put a foot up behind you and off to the side not directly behind you but slightly off to the side you're going to bend that bottom knee stick that hip back now pretend you have two flashlights on your hip bones that are facing the floor and i'm going to reach cross body as i go down bending at the knee internally rotating that leg and then i'm going to open up with not only my hip but my whole upper body so we're going to do this same exercise on both sides make sure your hips are level and if you feel any pain at all obviously you want to make sure you have some balance aids if you need that. If you have any pain at all, please stop and reassess whether this one would be the best hip circle type exercise for you. If not, you can always be on all fours and do something very similar to that. The nice thing about pushing your foot back into the wall is it keeps your glutes on where we tend to overuse just our hip flexors. Now, if you want to really challenge yourself, you can take this same exercise and make it where you can hop foot to foot and make sure you gain your stability first, push that foot into the wall, make sure you're not pushing it directly behind you because if you do directly behind you, then what's gonna end up happening is you're gonna twist on that hip in not a great way. And keeping your abs tight so you're not rotating at your lower back and instead you're actually in fact rotating at your hips. These are some screens that if you want to test if you're more the flexion intolerant or extension intolerant spine, which is something I do with all the belts and the straps. Um, I have another one online that if you prefer to take that one or in the manual, this is one of the screens that I use for a lot of the people. Now, keep in mind, this is just a starting point. Once you actually have the bands pulling on you and the belts and stuff, it becomes a lot more apparent. 
which one you are and it would literally have to be a month of training the wrong way to actually get injured so you just might feel a little tighter which we can catch that in time so the flexion and tolerance spine i in fact would pull them backwards now we're going to do all the exact same drills except the difference is we're going to be pulled backwards so kicking into the wall abs tight pushing and then opening and closing that hip down working on internal and external rotation a good rep range is about 10 of each on each leg and then maybe even doing this one or two times if you have a restriction opening or closing pay attention to that you may need to roll your hip out or you may just need to stretch your adductors or your growing out before you go back to this just make sure that you're not going into your lower back there should never be any pain associated at any point and let us know if you have questions and obviously let us know about your successes too now we're going to move on to the side kick to a cross front or back again trying to find something to pull you backwards and be next to a wall is probably the most challenging part about this but even wearing the fx boom belt there is an effect it's like 30 percent of the effect of having the pull you can also put a pole in front of you and kind of have a downward pressure not rounding forward into your spine but just keeping your abs engaged by a downward pressure onto the pole will also elicit a very similar response. The goal is, is that we're not just solely focusing on our feet and we're focusing a little bit more on our hips and keeping our um, abs engaged so our posterior chain can truly, truly train. And make sure that when you're raising overhead that you're fully sideways. Now we're gonna do rotation, same thing. You're gonna put your foot up on a wall behind you, get your hips even, and you're gonna rotate at your hip. You're gonna internally rotate towards the bottom leg and externally rotate towards the ceiling. Keep in mind, pretend you have flashlights on your hips, pointing them at the ground, and your flashlights never go towards the side walls. So now, once you test and you're an extension intolerant spine, which is the people that like to be pulled forward, this is the same drills that we just did, but with obviously being pulled forward. Again, finding something to hook to. Obviously, I'm hooked to a little bit shorter strap so I can get to the wall, and I'm gonna kick forward and back. Now, whether you're hooked just at the belt or hooked at the belt and shoulder straps, that's completely up to you. Everything is the exact same. You push into the wall until you feel your glutes engage and your hips and your abs, and then you're gonna open and close the hip once you kick that leg back. Start with about 10 reps on each side and maybe even going to a hopping side to side situation just make sure that your foot is straight because a lot of times people get caught up either arching their back and then they turn their foot out to get more range of motion so really control that your bottom foot stays straight and the weight is in your heel and your big toe and your tripod of your foot so once you've done both sides and you can hop side to side you can challenge your athleticism there this just helps you keep your abs engaged so you don't overuse your lower back and miss your hips so then the next one is doing the sideways one. So you might have a little bit different setup. Again, it's the hardest thing is trying to find things to hook into. You can hook into a door. You can hook into a door and use the back of a couch, but it's up to you what you find the best use of. Um, if you do have an extension belt and that's all you're using, you can even take a towel or a sock and put it into the back of the belt to give more the effect of being pulled forward you like a lot of pressure into that lower back and you don't like very much touching your stomach again whether you like crossing your leg in front or back is completely personal try both and see which one works best for you you should feel both glutes engaging and then again you can add the hop hop to add the more athletic aspect to this exercise and then again learning how to recruit your feet and keep your big toe engaged and your small toes and heel down because extension and tolerant people tend to be toe walkers so they tend to fall into their toes so the purpose of the band is to pull you forward so that you stay in your heels a little bit more and then we have the hip rotation and open again you're opening towards that front leg and internally rotating towards it and then you're opening the hip keeping your hips both facing the ground as if you have flashlights that were facing the ground and you're keeping your back foot engaged to the wall please stop by and subscribe for more tips